Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies. In the first article we will be analyzing, it's titled, Why I Love SoFi Stock, and You Should Too. So we're going to be going over their upcoming catalysts, news updates, and where I think the share price of this company could be going towards the end of the year. However, in more pressing news, we're going to be going over probably the last earnings report update for Palantir Technologies before they report their earnings on August 7th, which is Monday. So we're going to be going over the odds of them breaking out and surging in price after the overall earnings comes out, or if the company is going to drop in their overall share price after earnings. So we're going to be going over those scenarios and what this author thinks will happen. So with that being said, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now for more videos on SoFi Technologies or Palantir Technologies. Comment down below where you think SoFi stock is headed in the future and whether or not you think Palantir will have a good or or negative earnings report. Subscribe if you are new. Don't forget to become a member to support me personally for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. But if not, don't worry. By subscribing, you're going to get this content for absolutely free. And with that being said, let's jump straight into today's stories. SoFi Technologies, as you already know, is a fintech company or a financial technology company that operates as a digital bank. Right now, they're trading for around $10 per share, while very negative analysts believe the company could drop all the way down to around $3, while more bullish positive analysts believe the company could surge up to $16 over the next 12 months. But let's take a closer look at SoFi stock. Recently, we've seen a plethora of analysts change their mind about this overall company, and we even saw Jim Cramer buying into the SoFi hype. However, I do want to say that none of these analysts, including myself, know the true future of this overall company. The only thing we can do is provide educated guesses and price targets that should be used as a guide and not necessarily as exactly what we will happen because no one can really see the future in the short term on any particular stock. However, we can analyze the trend of the larger fintech or neo banking space, which SoFi Technologies is a part of, on top of their overall fundamentals, to get an accurate view about the future price appreciation of this overall company and stock. SoFi Technologies has been on a huge uptrend because they do offer their consumers a one stop digital shop, which offers software for banking and brokerage services, trading stocks, and even trading cryptocurrencies. Many analysts recently have actually walked away with now four analysts saying to sell SoFi Technologies. However, I do not think that is a wise thing to do if you are a long-term investor. However, overall, I would still say that there is a bullish positive sentiment surrounding this company considering that seven analysts still have a buy rating for this overall stock. However, you should be aware that the average one-year price forecast is down around 16% from where it's trading right now, meaning that the average price target for this company is substantially lower than the company's current share price. And there is one other problem that I would like to highlight to make investors aware of, and that would be their overall loss in their financial services as well as their technology platform. These segments of SoFi are going to take a lot longer to ramp up to actually turn profit or start bringing the company in a substantial revenue stream. However, eventually, both of these segments, I think, will kick into high gear and will start to pay off in a major way for this overall company. For instance, SoFi is still losing money on their financial services, but the loss that they brought in was only $4.3 million last quarter instead of the $53.7 million compared to a year ago. On top of that, their technology platform still remains a small portion of the overall revenue for this company, growing year over over year at just 4%. But the CEO of SoFi Technologies thinks that all three of their segments, which would be their lending segment, their financial services segment, as well as their technology segment, are all going to work together and eventually propel this company toward profitability, which I think is going to happen during the fourth quarter of 2023. So overall, I do think that SoFi Technologies is wise to diversify into all three of these overall revenue channels, but two of the channels are acting somewhat as an anchor right now for SoFi. But again, this is a long-term development. If we just give SoFi Technologies more time to further develop their financial services as well as their overall technology platform, eventually these will become major revenue sources for the company, which should add to their overall future profitability after this year. 
So I want to re-emphasize that SoFi Technologies is a long-term play. It's a long-term buying opportunity. And it's clearly a company that investors should wait on or hold for the overall long-term, in my opinion. And clearly, I still hold this view because I still hold SoFi Technologies in my personal portfolio. But like any singular risky growth company, I do not allocate more than a 5% initial portfolio allocation to any singular company. However, as time goes on, I think this company is only going to get better better and better and here's why. As interest rates start to back off due to the very strong economic position that the country is in right now, which I think will just increase as time goes on, this strength will then reflect directly in the overall financial markets. And in particular, SoFi Technologies model will become apparent to where their flywheel business model will start to work extremely well, thus growing the overall company and making them more profitable after the end of 2023. So, Clearly, I still have a long-term position in SoFi Technologies. I think right now the company is slightly overpriced. However, if you are going to take a long-term position in this overall company and you're planning to wait the next 5 to 10 years or even further out than the next 5 to 10 years, that this company could be a phenomenal opportunity to get into. I also want to have some honorable mentions in a similar or the same space which SoFi operates in. I also like new holdings on top of Mercado Libre as well as Ally financial. So feel free to do extra research into those companies as well because I own all four of those companies. But in the end, I would say that SoFi Technologies is still fundamentally strong and they are primed for future growth. Now let's move into what you may have clicked on this video for, and that is none other than Palantir Technologies. And we're going to break down their revenue forecast for quarter two regarding why I personally think they are going to beat on their revenues. Right now, Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR, trades for $18 per share and this company is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government clients. On top of that, Palantir Technologies specializes in artificial intelligence, which is one of the things which has inflated the share price to around $18. Now, with that being said, there are some negative analysts who believe the company is going to fall down to around $5 and other analysts who are very prestigious who believe the company is going to surge up to $25 over the next 12 months. Palantir Technologies is set to report their quarter two earnings report for 2023 on August 7th, which is Monday. And depending on the positivity or the negativity surrounding this company, it's going to influence where their shares go in the future. So let me start off by saying that we're going to be focusing on specifically their revenue, and we're going to have to go into their overall market to do just that. So let me start by saying that enterprises or commercial clients across the entire globe had to cut down on discretionary spending in quarter one. And this was mainly due to the world economic environment, where it would benefit companies to be more frugal and spend less. And as you know, Palantir's technology is very expensive, and with global fears of an ongoing recessionary outlook, companies became more frugal and cut back on their overall spending. And as a result, software and analytics companies such as Palantir Technologies saw their sales decline in growth. If you look on screen right here, you can see their commercial customers in blue and their government customers in gray, to where their government customers are a fraction of their overall commercial customers. And I've predicted for quite a while now that their commercial clients or their commercial segment will bring them in eventually the majority of their overall revenue because there's just a larger market in the commercial sector. Another thing that we've seen is that enterprises have started to spend more again. And as Palantir introduced their AI analytics to its platforms as well as their AIP, this is going to increase Palantir's overall revenue, specifically in their commercial segment. And since artificial intelligence is so valuable to companies right now, I would make the case that more enterprises now than ever before and going into the future are going to spend money on artificial intelligence and buy Palantir's overall products and services. So this could lead to huge contracts being landed for Palantir Technologies in the future. Now, let's take a deeper dive into their overall bifurcated financials, and that's just a fancy way of saying that Palantir classifies their revenue in two main segments, which would be their commercial segment as well as their government segment. The author goes on to correctly state that Palantir is essentially an amalgamation of a B2B and a B2G, or a business-to-business -business company as well as a business-to-government company that deals in both parties. However, when we look at the growth rates between their business-to-business -business and their business-to-government, their business-to-business -business is rapidly outpacing their business-to-government, which means that our prior predictions are completely accurate. Palantir's commercial revenue has been growing nearly every single quarter in spite of the prevailing recessionary 
environment, which I think we are cleared and we are out of that. I really don't think that we are at a risk of recession. And this is going to benefit Palantir Technologies, especially as they pour more money into their aggressive direct sales efforts, which has led to an increase in their overall top of the line. And with new AI platforms being introduced now, the various enterprises are arguably resuming spending specifically to stay competitive in the AI space. And I anticipate that Palantir's commercial revenue growth will benefit from this from now until many years in the future. On top of that, if the Federal Reserve decides to reduce interest rates because inflation is becoming controlled, that is going to increase the overall money supply in which Palantir's commercial business might experience a huge boom, meaning more customers are going to gravitate toward SoFi Technologies. But what about their government segment? Their government division is the place where their stable revenues come from, because eventually the government will pay. Although the problem with this is that Palantir's government business has been saturated to the point where their growth is slowing down very quickly. So when we combined these two revenue segments, being their commercial clients as well as their government segment, this author estimates that the company is going to bring in around $550.4 million, which is over $20 million more than Wall Street's estimate. Because for Palantir to have a revenues beat on their upcoming earnings report, which I think will happen, I do think Palantir is going to beat on their overall revenues, they're anticipated to bring in $530 million, and if they beat that by even $1 million, that would be a revenue beat, but this author believes they're going to beat it by around $20 million. So clearly he believes that they are very well positioned to beat on analysts' overall estimates on the upcoming earnings report, which is going to add to the overall positivity surrounding the stock, causing the momentum to increase and the share price to increase with it. Now, for me, I don't know exactly by how much they are going to beat on their overall revenues, but I do think a revenue beat is clearly in the cards for Palantir Technologies, and this could cause an increase in their overall share price. But just like what we saw with SoFi Technologies, we are going to see a pullback after earnings. SoFi Technologies pulled back after their earnings after an initial increase due to the positivity, and I think the same thing is going to happen with Palantir Technologies. You should also be aware that Palantir is trading at a very large premium, meaning that it is very expensive. Palantir shares are trading over 21 times the company's trailing 12-month sales, and that is very expensive. Ideally, we would want this to be at or below 10. We would want a PS ratio or the price to sales multiple to be at 10 or lower, and that would indicate a good buying opportunity. However, this author says that according to their historic PS ratios, this is one of their lower PS ratios because he's trying to take into consideration when the company was extremely overpriced when they surged after their original DPO. However, I would argue that you should not use the peaks of this share price for the PS ratio because at those times the company was overvalued substantially. Clearly Palantir is better off right now than it was back then, meaning that if they're overpriced now, they were clearly overpriced back then. So instead of comparing Palantir Technologies to its history, rather you should compare them to their overall industry average, which is substantially lower than Palantir's current PS ratio, meaning that this company is trading at a pretty penny right now. And I would use this as as an opportunity just to hold through their overall earnings report because to act or make a buy or sell decision based on their upcoming earnings is not the best long-term strategy. The best thing to do in my opinion would just be to hold through earnings and if it increases make sure to take some profits off at the top and then reinvest when the company pulls back a little bit or hold even if the share price goes down that allows you to invest and lower your overall average cost. So again before earnings as a long-term investor in this instance hold is probably going to be your best opportunity over the long run, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now for more videos on SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies. Subscribe if you are new. Don't forget to smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next YT video.